We're live. We are live. It is 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope that everyone is joining us for this live. Very exciting. Um, I'm going to go over to the event page and post a link so everybody can find this. If you are in the first couple hundred people that are showing up just now, I see 71 people are on right now. Hopefully that's going to grow. We got 184 now. Um, if you're one of these first few people coming in, do us a favor. You know the drill. Click that button. Spread it around so everybody gets their notifications. So everybody, There we go. There's our first 300 people. Hey, guys. Do yeah, the thing. I'll tell them. You tell them. Yes. I'm going to go spread the link, and Anna's going to tell you all what to okay. do. Okay. You can turn it more towards me if you want. Okay. <laughs> Down in the middle. All right. Yes. Tell them. Tell them what to do. Yes, Susan. Spread the love. <laughs> if you, since you're the first, like the first 300 people who are on here, please click that white arrow below the live and spread it out to many more people. Facebook and YouTube, they, they mostly send it out, send the notification out in batches to people. So when you when you sprinkle it, yay! That's what I think about it. <laughs> that helps us, right? Yeah, that helps, helps us. us. That helps that helps the computers tell everybody that we are here. Yeah, we're on. Can move your mouse off of the <clears throat> yeah comment second. <laughs> okay, I'm actually gonna. Um, Daddy and I are gonna look at those on the side, and so. Uh, do you want to tell everybody what's going on tonight before we before we bring Miss Abby on? Sure. So tonight is the night that we get to meet Abby, Jamelli's second trainer. So that's going to be pretty cool. Is everyone ready for this? <laughs> Bet everyone is. And what is uh, what? Um, is Abby what who is she she is the volunteer trainer at where four paws for ability <laughs> okay um everybody getting on sitting down I am about to spread the link if you are just coming in please click that button and spread this around for us we're going to get started in just a minute here we want to make sure that everybody is on that everybody can be here so nobody misses anything so help us out by spreading it around it really helps the system send out those notifications if yes. you can click that white arrow button and spread it around you have to everybody all right you have to there we go. It's in the events page. So everybody who signed up for the event should be seeing a notification just now. And are we ready to get Abby on? I think so. All right. Let's meet Miss Abby. Hello. This is Miss Abby. <laughs> hey, Abby. I'm excited. Hi. I'm very excited as well. <laughs> so Abby is a volunteer trainer for Four Paws for Ability, which is the service dog organization in Ohio that we have used to get Anna a service dog. And the dogs at Four Paws for Ability, they go through three phases of training. They have their basic puppy training, which is like an introduction to everything that life has to offer so that they're not afraid of things. And then they have a second phase of training, which is more like an obedience training and maybe some fun stuff thrown in there and just like learning how to be a good dog. And then the third phase of training, which we're going to meet with the head trainer, Emily, tomorrow night to talk about is the advanced training where they actually learn techniques specific to their client. But this phase, the second phase that Abby helped with was that fun middle phase and she actually got to take Jamelli to a really interesting place. So let's listen to Abby talk about uh, how she got started with Four Paws and what that's like. Yeah, so I got started with Four Paws my freshman year of college. Uh, I attended the University of Finley in Finley, Ohio. And they started up an organization, a club on campus that helps. That's Four Paws. It's a it's, yeah, it's four paws for the University of Finley. So we had, it started up the year before I got 
to campus. So it was pretty new when I joined. And so we only had six dogs on campus. So I originally joined as a secondary trainer in my freshman year. And that is a puppy sitter is what it's commonly referred to. So I would take, the dog didn't live with me at the time. So I would take just a dog from a primary if they had a class that the dog couldn't come to, or if they just needed some time away from their dog, or if I just really wanted to sit a dog, I could send a message out asking for one. And I would hang out with them for a few hours, take them to classes, take them around campus, took a few to the store a few times. Um, And then my sophomore year, I made the decision to become a primary volunteer trainer, which means the dog came and lived with me full time. And I was responsible for that dog. Uh, Everything was still like through four paws. So I got all the food and everything for free still, but they lived with me. And I got my first dog in November or December of my, of 2021. So I got my first dog when Jamelli was around being born, basically. Um, He was 11 months old. So he was, I started with an older dog just to make sure I could uh, handle a dog and have one living with me. Uh, Because it is a big commitment to have, to take these dogs in and really care for them and make sure you're providing them the best training as possible. So I got him, his name is Brooks. I had him until February of 2022. Um, I only had him for like two or three months and he became a part of the breeder program there. So he is still in four paws, a part of the breeder program. He's got to pass one more step to become a breeder and actually start having puppies. So I'm very excited about that. Um, But once I got, Brooks went off to a guardian home, which is just a home where they or they sign up to take in the breeders and care for them while they're during their breeding career, which is like, it depends on the dog. I think how long they, they are breeders, but he went off to a guardian home and I was deciding what to do for my next foster. If I wanted an older pup or a younger pup. And I had gone through, um, four paws has a Facebook page called four paws dogs where they post all their litters and like the names and when they're born and some puppy pictures of them. So I was going through that routinely trying to figure out which litter, what kind of dog I wanted. I knew I didn't want to raise a doodle, um, but I didn't know what else I wanted. So I was going through and I found the Italian Delights litter and I fell in love with macaroni. I was like, I want macaroni. I, I only, when I first started, I only wanted male dogs. Brooks has been the only male dog I've had so far, and I have had four fosters. So that didn't last long, the male dog um, commitment. So I emailed back and forth with Four Paws, trying to figure out who I could get from the Italian Delights litter, because most of them had gone out to foster already. And we narrowed it down, me and my friends narrowed it down to there were two left. There was Jamelli and Rotelli. And I was like, well, I, at that time, you couldn't specifically pick who you wanted. So I, it was kind of like luck of the draw that I got Jamelli. And I was able to reach out to Terry and talk to her for a little bit. And we, I fell in love with Jamelli. I met her when she was, I first met her when she was three months old. I think we met at Bass Pro just for a quick little trip, just to meet her and see her. And she's the sweetest little puppy. There was so much going on and she just fell asleep right in front of the aquarium there. And at three months old, you're like, that's insane. I (laughs) thought it was insane. I was like, you would think you'd be up and wanting to see everything and just be like curious. And she was, she was asleep. Um, She couldn't have been bothered that we were there. And so Jamelli was my second full-time foster and I picked her up March 25th on her four month birthday, which I find it very fun that the day, the 25th is a very common day in Jamelli's timeline because she was born on the 25th. I picked her up the 25th. She got called back to AT on the 25th and her match was released on the 25th. I find that very fascinating. It's like the most amazing thing to me. 
I was looking at that and connecting the dots and I was like, wow. Um, but yeah, I picked her up on March 25th and we were besties. Although when I did pick her up, you, she was four months old when I picked her up and the kennel environment is very like high energy sometimes. And it was the middle of the day when I picked her up. So there was a lot going on, people in and out, everything. And when the kennel manager brought her out, she was like, oh, she just woke up from a nap. And I was like, oh, okay, this dog comes out to me all grumpy that I'm there to pick her up. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what do you want from me? Like, I was like, girl. And she was like sauntering. She didn't even acknowledge me. She just, we walked out to the car and I was like, wow, I love you very much already. <laughs> she cracked me up, but she, we got home and she was so excited and she I don't think she really knew what was going on when I first picked her up, but she was so excited after that. And we had a blast <laughs> and she That's cracked awesome. me up. And from the beginning, I mean, anyone that I would see, cause on campus, when I became a, a primary, she kind of went everywhere with me. So I took her to classes. I took her, we have, we have club events that we do that we socialize the dogs. We had a kissing booth with like, where people could come and take pictures with the dogs. And we, we even, um, <laughs> at our kissing booth, we even uh, dyed a few of our white dogs uh, green because it was like a luck of the Irish kind of kissing booth. It was a St. Patrick's Day's and Valentine's Day's event mix. And it was very fun. But she she just went everywhere with me. And she was very good from the beginning because I was always worried, like, how much can I push this puppy to do? before it's too much and and for her she just she just kind of went with the flow and and she's like oh we're gonna go here well I guess well, that's fine and so she had a great time and and everyone loved her on campus everyone always complimented how calm and how mellow she was and I'm like yeah like for the longest time do you know you know what zoomies are that the dogs get when they're mm -hmm. so high energy that they're running around so there were people that were like does she even get the zoomies and they didn't believe me when I told her she told them they do she just, she just would do it in random bursts. So like I had to get videos of her doing it when we'd be home. Cause she would only do it at home. And so that was fun. And yeah. then over the summer we got, we went back home. Cause I'm, I'm about two, two and a half hours away from back home. And so I took her home and I made the decision, quite crazy decision to pick up another summer foster. So I had two dogs over the summer I was raising, two service dogs in training. And I made the decision based on the fact that I knew I had the time to do it. And I know during the summer, that's when Four Paws really struggles to get volunteer trainers because a lot of the primaries who live on campuses will go home and they can't always take the dogs back home with them. So a lot of the dogs get returned. I was like, well, I can, I can pick up another one. And so I did, I picked up, um, my third foster Dolores. Uh, she's from the Encanto litter and she just recently became a fabulous funky and I'm, and she recently got adopted as well. So I'm very proud of her and glad she's found her place in the world. So over summer raising two was a little chaotic. I found it so much fun, but some people did call me a little crazy for it. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. It's, one is a commitment. Two is two is a lot. Um, but yeah, so then we came back to school in August. And she, again, she was just chill. She hung out really well. There, there was nothing that Jamelli did that, like, concerned me ever. She just was there. I honestly don't even feel like I trained her half the time. I feel like she came to me fully trained and she just grew up. Um, Cause like there was just, she just never caused an issue. She learned things so fast. I taught her um, bang the little, the play dead command. We call it bang. <laughs> um, I taught her that in I think three days and she fell in love with it. It was her favorite thing to do. <laughs> She, she just, anytime I would just point at her and do the little hand signal, which is this, and she would just flop over. Sometimes it'd be dramatic. Sometimes it'd be very fast. Other times she'd take like 30 seconds to lay down and go to her side. And it cracked me up every time. 
<laughs> and she loved it. Um, so in September of t- last year, she was she's on she was on breeder hold for pretty much up until she went back to for advanced training. Um, they evaluated for her and three of her sisters, and they really wanted her for a breeder. But all of her siblings were just so similar. They all were very consistent in how good they were temperament wise. Wow. They had like different, a couple differences, you know. They were, you know, but they were pretty much similar, is what I was told, in how their evals went. And so it was really kind of up in the air who was going to be the breeder. And at the time, one of her siblings, Fontina, had, uh, was in heat at the time and they didn't eval her in the heat because they, we take them to the mall for their evals and she couldn't be out in heat. So she, once they evaled Fontina, I got an email that they were going to spay Jamali and that we would be waiting for her next step. She would be continuing on the service dog path basically. Um, mm-hmm. Which I was, I was very excited for. It was kind of like, I was both, happy and sad at the same time because if she would have become a breeder I would have become her guardian home and so I would have kept her but at the same time every time somebody would ask me about that and how I felt about it when when she was on breeder hold I was like I don't know I think she'd be a great service dog but she'd also be a great breeder so it was like it was kind (laughs) of like I don't know I would just selfishly I wanted her to be a breeder but I'm very very glad she didn't become a breeder because now she gets to go to you, and I'm very excited for that because I think you guys are the perfect little match. Um, but, yeah, so she didn't get a spay date until I reached out wondering what her next steps were. So I reached out within a week. I'm insane. I should I could have waited, but I heard back from the trainers that they were looking at her to come back in the next callback, which, is, which was October 25th. And so I was very excited for it. I was like, okay, but I didn't get an official email. And I remember getting that email that she was getting called back. She got called back on her 11 month birthday. And so she was very young going back to AT. And I remember getting that email and just, I literally looked at her and I started crying. I was like, (laughs) I was so excited for her to go back. But at the same time, um, my friend, her dog also got called back. And so she got her callback email first. So she texted me. And so when she texted me that her dog got called back, I turned and looked at Jamelia and I was like, I'm just kidding. I don't want you to go back. I just want to keep you forever. And as soon as I said that, I got the email that she was called back. And I just looked at her and I started crying. And I was like, That's not nice. <laughs> and so, but she got called back and I got, I was blessed to have two more weeks with her because um, she got spayed like two days after her callback. So I dropped her off for a day and then I, I got to pick her back up and hang out with her for two, two more weeks. And then she went back, but she's, she's so amazing. Um, and then once I knew she was getting called back, I wanted to get my next foster cause I can't live without a dog apparently. And so I picked up her sis, her half sister, Mesquite. So they share the same dad and you would think they're the same dog. They are, they don't look similar at all. Mesquite looks like a golden retriever and Jamali looks like, well, a, a black golden retriever basically. So they look kind of similar, but they act the same. They are the same like personalities. And although I think Jamali's a little bit more confident than Mesquite, but I picked her up and I've had her ever since and she's just a sweet dog as well. So I actually picked her up from Jamali's. This is confusing. But Jamelli has a brother, Pizza, and that volunteer trainer who had Pizza also was raising Mesquite. So she had two. She had Pizza and Mesquite, and she made the decision that she needed to find someone else for Mesquite because she, her time commitments were changing through the winter. Um, and so it just lucked out that I was able to pick up Mesquite and care for her and take her. I'm very glad because I do love Mesquite a lot. <laughs> She's one of my favorite dogs. I do enjoy her very much. But yeah, I've enjoyed being a part of Four Paws and everything and the whole mission and everything. It's very rewarding in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's that's probably that's my story up until now, I think. 
That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Um, can you run through one more time the the thing about the 25th? What were the dates? So she was born November 25th. Right. I picked her up on March 25th, mm-hmm. which was her four-month birthday. Um, she got called back for AT. Her callback date was October 25th. And AT is advanced training. Yep. That's the third step. Um, oh. And then she her match letter came out on January 25th. And I looked at the calendar. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, I know. Graduation day mm-hmm. is February twenty fifth. Yes, <laughs> I do. I do recall writing that down and thinking about that too. That's so amazing. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. Graduation day for when we the day that we're done with our training, our people training, is February twenty fifth. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I think that's that's so amazing. I don't know how that lined up, but it did. <laughs> I just wanted to say that when you were talking about doodles, Daddy hates them. He doesn't. <laughs> them. He doesn't hate he them. He thinks they're crazy. <laughs> they they take a special special kind of trainer, I believe. My friend, uh, my friend Grace, she uh, raised um, Santa Rosa, who's also in your class. Um, she I love Rosa so much but she was a lot of energy and a lot of dog so mm-hmm. bless Grace for raising that <laughs> she's a sweet dog though what was her personality m- m- most like like when you had her um she she was a very sweet dog very affectionate very attentive to like your emotions I think she was very she cared a lot. She cares a lot about like how you're feeling. And I noticed that um, she also had a goofy side, but I noticed a lot of that when I had an unfortunate inci- incident where my dad passed away in August and Jamelli was so attentive. And when I, cause I actually, she ended up staying with my friends for a few days while I went home. But when I got back, She was just all over me and just making sure I was okay. Very, very in tune with your emotions is what I would say. When you were goofy, she'd be goofy. And when you were like mellow and chill, she'd she'd settle down too. She was never like super hyper when I didn't need her to be. But like we'd have our moments where both of us were just like insane and we'd be running around the house together and having a good old time playing with toys. So... So sorry for your loss, Abby. Oh, thank you. I was I was just gonna ask you when um when you, you said that when Jamelli like had the zoomies, it was kind of like in, in like a random. Mm-hmm. Is it is it kind of is it random as in like when cats see something and they just and you're like taking them for a walk and they just jump up at it or something? Oh no, she she knows the difference between working and playing. Um, most of the time, it'd be we'd come home from school. We'd have long days at school, so I would leave my house with her at eight, nine in the morning, and we wouldn't come back till about four or five. Sometimes even later if we were studying out late. But I'd let her off the leash, take her vet up, vest off and everything, and she would just run around for a little bit. And it was always short bursts. So she would run around, and she'd be like, okay, I'm good. But occasionally she would get up and be like, okay, I'm ready to play. I'm like, okay, yeah. We'd, and so we'd play a little bit. It was never – she never had that where we were out in public and she got super crazy bursts of energy or anything. She always kind of kept her cool and just kind of was like, okay. If she saw her people that she liked, she had a lot of friends on campus. So if she <laughs> saw some of her friends, she'd get a little excited where she'd wag her tail. Well, wag half of her body. But, you know, <laughs> she that that's probably the most excited Jamelli would get out in public when working. And when did you start following our story? It was before you knew about the match, correct? Yes. So I started following you guys in December. I saw um, a friend on Facebook comment on one of your posts, and so it popped up on my feed. And so I started, like, following your channel after that. 
And and did she comment on our post because she knew we were working with four paws, or was it just some? Yes, she um, she's another four paws um, foster, and so she commented like a picture of her dog, because I think you guys had shared one of the previous classes, okay. and we're like counting down the days until Anna's match. And at what point did you start to to think or or you know on that maybe Jamelli and Anna might be matched? Um, I try my very best not to speculate, but it happened. So I originally actually sent Anna's page to my friend Grace before I knew you guys weren't getting a doodle. Um, and I was like, oh, this one could be Rosa's because she's from Florida was my was my thing. And Rosa's from the Florida beaches litter. That was how I connected mm -hmm. those dots. And then I saw you guys didn't need a doodle and that you were pretty much full mobility where I knew Rosa had been doing seizure alert. And I was like, well, Jamelli's doing full mobility, maybe. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what other dogs were doing. I only knew what Santa Rosa and what Jamelli were doing. So I was like, I didn't want to speculate. But I had a little feeling. And then as it kind of got closer, I was like, maybe. So I tried not to get my hopes up. But I, I, I did a little bit. So and I, before your um, the merch that you're wearing closed I was like okay just in case I'll buy a purple hoodie and luckily enough it, it turned out although I do like the hoodie I would have probably bought it anyways but speaking of I'm wearing that merch mm -hmm. yes I see I really enjoy it and I know a lot of my friends were glad that the sale reopened so they could get some as well <laughs> But you you had mentioned to me, Abby, in a in a message that you were watching the live we did right before Christmas when we were putting up our family tree, and we had pulled out the chain with our family colors, our pink, green, blue chain, and we were talking mm -hmm. about service dog, right? We we're like, what color is the service dog going to be? And we had decided that the service dog, what color was the family color for the service dog? Purple. Purple. And you said yeah. that that was Jamelli's color. Yes. So I try. To assign my dogs a color I try it doesn't always happen but when I when I got Jamelli I was like yeah she came with like a purple collar and a purple leash and I was like well clearly you're a purple dog so I tried to you know keep her leashes and everything purple for her so I, I bought special purple leashes I got purple bandanas and everything for her too <laughs> she, she was a purple dog that was her color so that was another thing that I remember sending a message to grace i told i tell grace everything so i was sending a message i sent her a message. i was like her they picked purple it's got to be jamelli <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it was far speculation <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> clearly that was not the logic four paws used when they were matching you but they knew something was up <laughs> and you found out you found out that it was anna the same day we did right mm -hmm. yeah. yes yeah. yeah i was actually i had slept in funnily enough and I remember I turned my phone off because I didn't want anyone else to like tell me other than like the email or seeing the match letter myself. And so I woke up to a bunch of texts and I was like, well, clearly it happened. So I was like, I had to hop on and read the letter and I read the um, email as well that we got. So nice. Yeah, they came out real early. I had scoped out mm -hmm. the previous matches releases and it was all like 2 p.m., 5 p.m. Yeah. And then they post them at like 9 a.m. Like what happened? Yeah, <laughs> I think they were very excited to release yeah. these matches. These, <laughs> these are some exciting matches. And I'm, I, I've worked with a few of the dogs in the class too. So I'm very excited for all of them. I have a couple more questions to ask you. Mm-hmm. What is one piece of advice about Jamelli that I should know? Um, my biggest piece of advice would be p being patient in developing your bond. I think that's something that some it it depends on it varies with every person, right? So, and it I can only speak from like my bonds with my fosters, so my bond with Jamelli was almost instantaneous and we just clicked and we became besties. But that might not always be the case with anyone because my bond with Mesquite took about four weeks for us to actually become besties and like, like love each other. <laughs> we, but also granted Mesquite was came in a weird, weird time where I was 
getting rid of Jamelli and then also like bringing her in. So it was a weird thing, but just patience and really developing that bond. And you're, you're hearing now how amazing Jamelli is. She is, and I will tell you, you'll, you'll see how amazing she is when you meet her, but you know, she's going to be, you guys are a new environment for her. So she might not do everything you want right away. Like the goal is, yeah, that will happen, but it'll take time to develop that bond and, and the further you go along, the stronger your bond will be. And so eventually you'll get to a point where she know she can read your mind basically. And you guys will have this, this connection, but it might take time. And so just being patient with that and trying not to um, rush anything, I think is another big thing. You don't want to force something to happen. I think you guys will bond pretty well. I, from what I'm hearing that I think you and Jamelli have the same personality. I think you guys are going to be two peas in a pod, but it might take some time and that's okay. So I, I heard you guys are going on a road trip to help with this bond. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it'll, I think you guys will be fine. Yeah. So we've got the time with her there in town Mm -hmm. while we're training. So she'll get to kind of ease over, like stay with us at night, but be at the facility she's used to during the day. And then when we leave there, we're going to stop for a few days um, in the mountains where it's beautiful and peaceful and just let the girls just spend a whole lot of good quality time together every moment just getting to know each other before we, you know, finish the drive home. <laughs> yeah, I I think that'll be good. And I, I, I think you guys will be great and have a great bond. It just, you know, I just don't want you, like, I was, I was worried that like, not that you guys wouldn't bond, but like, I feel like we're, everyone's telling you how perfect she is and she borderline <laughs> is perfect and she's a great dog but at the end of the day, she is a dog, so it does take time to adjust things and 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 stuff. So I just didn't want you to be disappointed if she wasn't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know if that's a thing that happens or what. But she's a great dog, I will tell you that. I, I was just actually in tears the other night talking to my husband about leaving with her because mm-hmm. I feel bad for her in a way that she's got to transition to this new environment. It makes me emotional as you can hear. Yeah. So we are definitely going to give her some grace and understand that this transition yeah. is going to take time and, um, you know, we'll, we'll be gentle with her through it. So, yeah. Do you have any tips for me as a new surface dog owner? Um, I think just enjoy it. I think you're going to have a great time. This, this will be your first dog if I'm correct, right? Yes. I think you're going to have a great time. Yeah, I I, I do think you're going to have a great time with her. And she's she's an amazing dog. Um, She will work you for treats. She will. You can. I spoiled her. I have no limit on what I do with these dogs and how much I spend on these dogs. So they are spoiled to, to no end with me. I think maybe limiting how much you're spending on her. You know, giving her allowance at least, because this, I, I have too many. I have too many toys. I, <laughs> it's and since Four Paws has now allowed us to get stuffies for the dogs, I have purchased way too many. The other day, I bought ten toys for no reason other than they were cute and Mesquite would like them, and she does. She's appreciative, but I think you're gonna have so much fun. And I so I say just enjoy it and have a great time with her. (laughs) Do you think we were wondering about this because Anna has a menagerie of stuffies. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, that Jamelli will be able to tell the difference like from her own stuffed toys to Anna's stuffed toys? Um, so when I had Jamelli, they were still not allowed to have stuffies. So they just changed the rule. Like it was fresh, like I think a couple months ago. Um, but you know, one thing they do preach to us is have the dogs know the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And so I think she should know the difference, but it's easy to teach. And I'm sure they can show you up at four paws, how to, how to tell, let her know the difference. I think just telling her like, leave it would, would work for her, but I don't know what they'd tell you up there. 
but she should be able to tell the difference. And she's never destroyed anything with me. She's never had an issue with chewing on anything. So she's been pretty good about that. Nice. <laughs> Do you have any other questions for Abby or should we go to the viewers and see if they have any questions for Abby? I don't have any more. You want any more? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's see if anybody um, online has any Yeah, Jamelly sounds pretty, pretty wonderful. I, I cannot wait to meet her in person. It's going to be, <laughs> I know I'm going to be super emotional. I'm going to be crying. I, I can't, even, I'm emotional already. We haven't even gotten there. <laughs> so, this whole process has been emotional for me. Um, Sarah says, you gave great advice, Abby. I'm sure Anna and Jamelly will be absolutely fabulous together. <laughs> I'm sure they will be too. Yeah. I just, I, your, your mom told me that you're a very smart girl and, and for your age, you're very intelligent. And I, that just made me think of Jamelly because she is so <laughs> smart. That, that yeah. dog is insanely intelligent. So I think you guys are going to be best friends. I think your parents are going <laughs> to have, have a run for their money with, with you two. <laughs> you guys are going to be. <laughs> Thankfully, Dad is is a, has trained dogs before, mm -hmm. so he'll be on to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to read her some 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 yeah. questions? Look for questions that uh, we haven't already answered that specifically Abby might be able to answer. Oh, here's a good one. Maybe Sarah. Sarah says, "What is Jamelly's favorite toy?" Or what was her favorite? Toy yeah, what was her favorite you? toy when she was with you? So she had two favorite toys. Her first one was um, it's called the Benabone fish bone. It's a it's a it's quite literally a fish looking bone. It's a hard chew. And but we call it Jack Salmon just because I misread the label and it was flavored as Jack Salmon. But now I've convinced everyone up here in Finley that it's called Jack Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone loves their jack salmons up here and i i did just i did just buy her one because i was like oh she's gotta have something so you will be getting a little care package and there will be a jack salmon in there for her perfect, because that's perfect because we actually bought her two benabones mm -hmm. but we got the bacon stick and the mm -hmm. peanut butter wishbone we do not have a jack salmon. She, she loves all the benabones she also loves i tried to get a new one of it too but they didn't have it I ordered a bark box, a subscription to bark box, like in June. And one of the themes for the month was a trip to Italy. And so I got this macaroni noodle toy. <laughs> and it was funny to me because Jamelli's a noodle. So I'm like, oh, she's first of all, she's chewing on her brother. Second of all, it's <laughs> funny because she's a noodle. And so I I I tried to get them to get me send me another one, but I don't think they had any in stock. So they did send me some toys that I can I will be giving to you as well. But I'm gonna have to find that macaroni. I have a spare one somewhere that I'll have to find. She loved that one. She would just hold it up and run around with it, and she loves to like hold her toys around. Yeah, I can read it. Some well, hold on. Someone asked um, how Jamelli knows when she's working versus not working. Um. So how I always train it is if we're in the vest, if we're wearing the vest, we're working. So I would never, I never let my fosters play when they're on in vest. I never let them like kind of, I don't want to say misbehave because they're dogs, but I never like, it's not playtime if we're in the vest. Once we get home and we take the vest off and I yell free, you are welcome to run around the house and do whatever you want within reason. Mm -hmm. Like, you know knock down my TV or anything, but you know, um, it is something that you, that I like to work on with them is just like, okay, we take the vest off. You can run and play, but then we'll put the vest back on and we'll do obedience or we'll, we'll just do something that shows them that, oh, it's time to work. And for all my fosters have been really good about that and knowing that. Um, so I've been lucky that I haven't had to work on it too much. Oh, this is a good question. Yeah. Jersey says, what is Abby's major in college? Yeah, so I am actually an animal science major. So oh. we have 
we have Finley is really known for their pre-vet program up here. And I recently switched out of the pre-vet major because I really like the dog training and that aspect. So I'm going to go that route, but I'm just animal science. So, but yeah, we are lucky enough. We have two, well, three, three barns on campus that we have livestock animals like cows and sheep and goats in one. And then we have horses in another and we have more horses in the other. (laughs) It's, we have a great equine program, equestrian program as well. So, Wow. Does does Jamelli know Italian? (laughs) I wish. (laughs) That would be funny if she did. That would be be something. Um, Oh, what was it I saw? Another Oh, oh, a lot of people, we talked about this, Abby, you and I, so Mm -hmm. maybe just reiterate from our conversation, but a lot of people, because we have a pool, keep Mm -hmm. asking if Jamelli is going to swim with Anna. So what is it that you told me about that? So Jamelli is not a big water dog. She doesn't mind it. She likes to drink it. And we went on a, we, there's a place here about an hour away from us that it's a fenced in yard, has a big pond. So we took, um, me and my friends, we took our dogs down. We took Jamelli and then two of her friends down to play. And the, the two other dogs, Hadley and Danny, love the water. They they were swimming. Jamelli was a little more timid about it. She would she would get in about and she could where she could still touch, and she'd run around through there. But she did fall off the dock into the water and then was very dramatic about not liking swimming. So she's not a big water dog. <laughs> she was very dramatic about it. She she made my two friends pull her out of the water. And I'm like, Jamel, you were swimming. You just didn't want to swim to the edge. But she, so she's not a huge water fan. She could be. She's not scared of it by any means. She just prefers to, you know, keep her legs on the ground and and run through. And she likes running through the water. She got muddy enough to. Yeah. Well, that's fine because we have a saltwater pool. Mm -hmm. Um, does have like a ledge area by a fountain where Anna mm-hmm. plays often. So if she wanted to get her feet wet, she could get down there. Yeah. Have to go swimming. We've got a great uh, covered shady space where our couch is mm-hmm. out there where she can just chill with her water in her bowl and watch Anna swim. She doesn't have to get in the pool. Yeah. At all. So. Yeah. She'll pro- she, she'd like that. I just don't think she likes not being able to touch the ground. If that makes sense. I think yeah. she likes the control of that. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, Lisa says she had Jamelli pasta for dinner. <laughs> we, we couldn't find it anywhere. We've we've been looking for it. We couldn't find it anywhere up here. Um, let's see. Any other questions? We'll do like maybe one or two more. Oh, I see one. What? Tim says, does, does Jamelli have a favorite blanket? Um, not really. Um, I know when I had her, she has to sleep in her kennel. And they can't have, like, blankets in their kennels just in case they tear them up or chew on them. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just a standard rule. But she did. She does, like, snuggling in the bed a little bit. She's She, she likes to – she kind of likes to be the blanket, if that makes sense. Sometimes she'll lay <laughs> on top of you and you're like, well, okay, that works. <laughs> but, yeah, she didn't have – nothing like that, no. So she will like sleeping in bed with you. Yeah. Yeah. Excited for that. A lot of people are asking, how how does she ride in a car and, and stuff? Oh, and I asked Emily about this today, too, because I said, has she been in a car, you know, for a length of time? And Emily said, she does not get car sick. You are good to go there. Yeah. So I, when I'm back home, I live three hours away from Four Paws. And over the summer, I had to make three or four trips to four paws. So there and back is six hours and she would just, she kind of just sleeps in the car. She occasionally would get up and, and kind of just look at me like, Hey, where are we going? And I'm like, well, we're in the car, but um, she's never gotten car sick. She loves, loves the car ride. She will though. She will work you. Cause sometimes she'll like put her, both her paws up and just look back at you to help her in. She knows how to jump in the car. She just, <laughs> She knows that I, if, 
I have helped her before when I shouldn't have. But she just looks so pitiful sometimes. And you're like, okay, you can get in. But she knows how to jump in the car. She can jump. Sometimes she'll trick you into making her think you she can't. But she can. She's just <laughs> she's just too smart for her own good sometimes. Did she ever sit in the, the front passenger seat? Or do you always have her in the back on a bench seat? Um, she's always been in the back. Yeah. We, we, um, we aren't permitted to have them in the front seats. Right, okay. So we, so, we have, we're going to have her in the back, but we have mm -hmm. in the back a bucket seat. It's not a bench, but we uh, do have a harness for her. Yeah. She sat in buckets before my, uh, my grandpa's car has bucket seats in the back and she's oh, been okay. pretty fine with them. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. All right. I have another question. You have another question. Go. Yes. Shoot. <laughs> While you have her. When you like had to like wash Jamelli, if she went after after you like took her out to play, maybe mm -hmm. like on the grass or something, mm -hmm. does she prefer a bath or shower more? Um, I have always took her to like the pet stores, so she's, or I mean, I also worked at a dog groomer, so she's gone with me. We we don't fill up the bath if that makes sense but we do like she's she's been good in every scenario she's great with the blow dryers which she was good with those at four months old which to me blows my mind because it's like it's air just being forced at you mm -hmm. and she's she likes being groomed I, I would say she likes it she she'll lay there while you brush her and and wash her and you know she's she's always been really good she likes she likes baths. Nice. That's perfect. We have a, a walk-in shower just for her mm -hmm. that has a spray sprayer head that comes oh. down. So it'll be great. Oh yeah, she'll like that. She's she's a bath girl. She likes them. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna um, get off of here, Abby. It's been I think almost an hour. We appreciate oh you so much for everything. Yeah. You're no. Spending time with us tonight, but all of the pictures and videos and advice and mm -hmm. information and sharing your story and everything that you've done with me um, and private messenger and with us up to this point. But I really hope I'm um, looking forward to, you know, keeping in touch with you going yeah. forward um, just continuously. And maybe we can hop on video chat. Sometimes you can see Jamelli and talk to her, oh, yeah. and, yeah. you know, <laughs> just check in and, and keep, keep the relationship going. So, but we, yeah. Much yeah, no, I appreciate this. <laughs> uh, she's my yeah. first service dog I've placed, so it's really nice to have a family that's very communicative and and I love that you guys do this this social media and that you're sharing your story. I think it's very nice and and enriching. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me tonight. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, well, You're you welcome. have a good night and we will see you soon at graduation. Yes. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.